Hello and welcome everyone to this video on Configuring OData Service Authorization by Zaran Tech. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our Zaran Tech YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from us. So hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the concept of Configuring OData Services Authorization. Now the term authorization, what is the meaning of this authorization? The meaning is that giving access to a particular thing for a particular user that is if i own a bank account and so i am the only user who have got the access to the money which is which will be stored in that particular bank account and no other user can get access to it so that i can only be the user who will be expensing you will be using that money for whatever purpose i want so authorization means the only the authorized users have the access to that particular OData services. That means if you, I want to fetch some data from my database using OData services, then only I will have the authorization to use that OData service and none other user will be able to use it. So what is the meaning of configuring here? So configuring authorization OData services involves ensuring that only authenticated and authorized users can access or modify the data exposed by the OData service. That only the authorized user can access that particular OData service, but no other user will be able to use that OData service. So here is a step-by-step -step configuration which I'm going to discuss here in detail. The first one is authentication and the second one is authorization. Now the C, authentication and authorization. So first implement authentication to verify the ident to verify the identity of the user. That is the what if user is logging via his user ID and password, then we must authenticate his credentials so that we can verify the identity of the users. And common auth authentication methods include basic authentication, that is by using user name and password are sent with each request so that it will be authenticated automatically. Then we can use QAUTH cross. In, in, in this particular thing, we have the tokens that are used for authentication and this is more secure and commonly used in modern application. Then we have JWT, which is also highly used JSON wave token. Tokens are signed and used for authentication purpose. Then see, we have the second one here which is authorization now what is the meaning of it authorize once the user is authenticated you need to authorize their access to specific resources and operation that is suppose you are logging into your sap server and you have given your credentials then you will directly go to sap easy access screen now what tqt code you have the access to use it it will be checked via authorization so so simply in OData services what we do we define role and, and permission like we create roles like admin, user, viewer, etc. So that the only the given viewer will have the access to use that particular thing and no other user will be able to access that thing. Then we define what role each role can do. What role, sorry, what each role can do. That is we give permissions to everyone. Then we assign roles to users. That is map users to roles based on their specific function. Now, what is the use of it? We map users to role based on their job function. Then we integrate authorization in OData service. Now, what is the meaning of integrating the authorization in OData service? That we use more middleware. So we use the concept of middleware here to take the user's role and permission before allowing access to the OData endpoints. Now see, I'm going to explain this authorization concept in more detail. So when we define any RFC connection in SM59, so when you will be go to RFC connection in SM59, you will see a logon and security tab. And in this, you will see a field, a variable, whatever you say, it is a trust relationship. And you have got two radio buttons here, no areas. So if trust relationship is yes, it is always not preferable to give trust relationship as yes because if you are using it as a yes, then whom, whoever, whatever the user, it doesn't matter who is using it. If he have got the HTTP or the login of that particular thing, he will have the access to use that ODSA service. So you always would use no here and you should better give access to only the 
user whom you know and you whom you can trust more easily so if see we have non trusted connection here and if the trust connection is yes then no authorization check will be done and any every user who will be logging in your odata services and we will try to use your odata services he will have the access to use it and if it is marked as no so when we see log on security tab we have to select trust relationship is yes or no so if trust relationship marked yes then it means every user who have the link will have the access to use that odata services and therefore there will be no need to authorize and there will be no need for authorization checks in it and your odata service will be exposed so it is always so it is always advisable to use no here but we if we marked it as a no then we will perform the authorization checks for every user now if you are using trusted relationship see what happens here so if you are using the trusted relationship and you are getting this internal server error and if you are getting this message as user does not have sufficient authorization then it is all mandatory for you to go and give access to the user here so how do you authorize the odata service so the various step that it is required to authorize an odata service i am going to discuss is it step by step the first one is go to pfcg that is role maintenance transaction code here and here we go to menu and here we are required to create the authorization default so you go to the menu tab and you will be click on this authorization default inside this authorization default we can use here program we can use the gateway then we have the service name along with its version so the version can be various so whatever the version we are required to add the every version of our service under this authorization next we will go to the authorization tab here and in this authorization tab you will see the name of the program the type of the check so here we are required to create a profile and we are required to add the authorization data also here we can see the program or type of check flag that is see here we got the program here and we have also got the type of check flag here next we after using after giving this particular role we are required to add the user so for adding the user we are required to go to su01 transaction code and go to the roles tab and in this particular role tab you will give the name of the user here and you will assign the role in this particular roles tab so this is how we will auth give with authorization so we will configuring our odata service authorization for a specific user and c it is the most important thing that you need to understand that authorization means only the authorized users have access to use that particular odata services so be because odata services are very crucial and it if odata services are easily exposed then your data will not be exposed easily and it can cause a loss of data and it can cause a loss of a very large amount for your organization so configuring authorization in odata services involve ensuring that only authenticated and authorized users can access or modify the data exposed by the odata service this is all about configuration thank you very much